Want to master all the if-based formulas in Excel, once and for all? In this video, we'll break down the most powerful and commonly used conditional functions like if, ifs, if plus, and if plus, or ifna, ifera, and more. All explained with clear examples, simple logic, and real use cases. Whether you're brand new to Excel or just looking to strengthen your foundation, this guide will help you use logic like a pro. Let's dive right in. In this table, we have a list of employees and how many new clients each of them brought in. Now let's determine who qualifies for a bonus. We'll say that if an employee has 10 or more new clients, they get a bonus. If not, they don't. To do this, we'll use the IF function. Click on the first cell under the bonus column and type equal sign IF C5 greater 10 yes no. This formula checks if the number of new clients is 10 or more. If true, it returns yes. If not, it returns no. Instead of just yes and no, you can also return numbers, full sentences, or even calculations. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the employees. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of employees and the number of new clients they brought in. Now we want to assign different bonus amounts based on performance. To do that, we'll use the IFS function, which is perfect for checking multiple conditions without nesting several IFS. Click on the first cell under bonus amount and type equal sign IFS C5 greater 30, 3000, C5 greater 20, 2000, C5 greater 10, 1000, C5 less than or equal 10, 0. Here's how it works. If the employee brought in more than 30 clients, they get $3,000. More than 20 clients, equal sign $2,000. More than 10 clients, equal sign $1,000 10, or fewer equal sign $0 bonus. Excel checks each condition in order and returns the value for the first one that's true. And drag the formula down to apply it to the rest. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of employees, their number of new clients, and their performance ratings. We want to give a bonus only to those who meet two conditions at the same time. They must have more than 10 new clients and a rating above 5. You can easily change the thresholds, for example, require at least 15 clients or a rating above 7, by updating the numbers in the formula. It's fully customizable based on your business logic. To do this, we'll use the if plus and combination. The and function returns true only when both conditions are met. Click on the first cell under bonus if plus and and type equal sign if and C5 greater 10, D5 greater 5, yes, no. This formula checks both conditions. If both are true, it returns yes. If either one fails, it returns no. You don't have to return just yes or no. You can also return bonus amounts, text messages, or even different formulas depending on your scenario. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the employees. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have employees along with their number of new clients and their performance ratings. Let's determine who gets a bonus based on either of two conditions. An employee will receive a bonus if they brought in more than 10 new clients or their rating is above 7. To apply this, we'll use the if plus or combination. The or function returns true if any of the listed conditions is met. That's different from and which needs all conditions to be true. Click on the first cell under bonus if plus or and type equal sign if or C5 greater 10, D5 greater 7, yes, no. This formula checks if at least one of the conditions is true. If so, Excel returns yes. If both conditions are false, it returns no. You can also return other results instead of yes and no, like actual bonus amounts, status messages, or even conditional formatting indicators. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the employees. Let's move on to the next function. In 
this table, we have a product list with their IDs, names and prices on the left. On the right, we want to retrieve the price for each product ID using a lookup. We're using XLOOKUP to match the product ID and return the price. But what if the ID doesn't exist in the main table? That's where the IFNA function comes in to handle errors like hash n slash a when no match is found. Click on the first result cell and type equal sign IFNA XLOOKUP F5 B5 B14 D5 D14 0. Here's how it works. XLOOKUP tries to find the product price. If the ID is found, the price is returned. If it's not found, instead of showing hash n slash a error, IFNA replaces it with zero. You can also replace zero with a custom message like no matching product found, which is much clearer for the user. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the list. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a product list with their IDs, names and prices on the left. On the right, we want to retrieve the price for each product ID using a lookup. We're using XLOOKUP to match the product ID and return the price. But what if the ID doesn't exist in the main table? That's where the IFROR function comes in, to handle errors like NA when no match is found or other errors. You might be wondering, What's the difference between IFNA and IFROR? The key difference is simple. IFNA only catches NA errors. IFROR catches all types of errors, including NA, div 0 value, and more. If you want to handle just lookup-related errors, like missing data, use IFNA. If you want to cover every possible error type, go with IFROR click on the first result cell and type. Equal sign on IFROR, X lookup, F5, B5, B14, D5, D14, 0. Here's how it works. XLOOKUP tries to find the product price. If the ID is found, the price is returned. If it's not found, instead of showing NA or other errors, IFROR places it with 0. You can also replace 0 with a custom message like no matching product found, which is much clearer for the user. Press enter and drag the formula down to apply it to the rest of the list. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have product sales data by country and quantity. Let's say we want to calculate the total quantity sold for a specific product, in this case, olives. To do that, we'll use the SAMI function, which allows us to apply one condition. Click on the result cell and type equal sign SUMIF C5, C17, G5, D5, D17. Here's what it does. C5, C17 is the range. Excel checks for the product name G5 is the criteria cell. Currently set to olives D5, D17 is the quantity column where the matching values will be summed. Excel will go row by row and add up quantities where the product is olives. Press enter to get the total and you'll see the sum of G5. If we change the product in G5 to something else, like ham or wine, the result updates automatically. No need to touch the formula again. This makes it perfect for dashboards and dynamic reports. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have sales data showing quantities of different products sold across several countries. Now let's calculate the total quantity of wine sold in Spain. To do this, we'll use the SAMIFS function, which allows us to apply multiple conditions. Unlike SAMIF, which works with only one condition, SAMIFS lets you apply two, three, or even more filters at the same time. So if you're working with complex data, SAMIFS gives you much more control and flexibility. Click on the result cell and type, equal sign SAMIFS. D5, D17, C5, C17, G5, B5, B17, G6. Here's what each part does. D5, D17 is the range where we want to sum quantities. C5, C17, G5 filters only the rows where the product is wine B5. B17, G6 filters only the rows where the country is Spain Excel will add up the quantity only if both conditions are met. 
Press Enter to get the total, and you'll see the sum of wine sales from Spain. So if we change the product or country, Excel will automatically recalculate the result based on the new criteria. No need to touch the formula again. This makes it perfect for dashboards and dynamic reports. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of employees and their salaries. Let's count how many employees earn $2,000 or more. To do this, we'll use the counter function, which lets us count cells that meet a specific condition. Click on the result cell and type equal sign count if C5, C14, greater than or equal 2000. Here's how it works. C5, C14 is the range of salary values we want to check the condition greater than or equal 2000 tells Excel to count only the salaries that are greater than or equal to 2000 Excel will go through each salary and count how many meet the rule. You can change the condition to anything else. For example, less than 3000 or even equal 5000, depending on what you want to count. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have a list of employees, their salaries and performance ratings. Let's count how many employees earn at least $2,000 and have a rating greater than 5. To do that, we'll use the COUNTIFS function, which lets us apply multiple criteria at once. Click on the result cell and type equal sign COUNTIFS. C5, C14, greater than or equal 2,000. D5, D14, greater than 5. Here's what it does. It checks the salary column for values greater than or equal to 2000. Then it checks the rating column for values greater than 5. It only counts the rows where both conditions are true. This is great for filtering performance data, eligibility or layered rule checks in HR and finance. You can change the condition to anything else. For example, greater than or equal 3000 or greater than 4 depending on what you want to count. You can add even more criteria if needed. COUNTIFS supports up to 127 conditions. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have quantity data for different products sold across several countries. Now, let's find out the maximum quantity of olives sold in Spain. To do that, we'll use the MAXIFS function, which returns the highest value based on one or more conditions. Click on the result cell and type equal sign maxifs D5, D17, C5, C17, G5, B5, B17, G6. Here's how it works. D5, D17 is the range where we want to find the maximum value C5. C17, G5 filters by product, currently olives, B5, B17, G6 filters by country, Currently, Spain Excel will search through the list and return the largest quantity that matches both criteria. So if we change the product or country, Excel will automatically recalculate the result based on the new criteria. No need to touch the formula again. Let's move on to the next function. In this table, we have quantity data for different products sold across several countries. Now let's find out the minimum quantity of olives sold in Spain. To do that, we'll use the MINIFS function, which returns the lowest value based on one or more conditions. Click on the result cell and type equal sign MINIFS D5, D17, C5, C17, G5, B5, B17, G6. Here's how it works. D5, D17 is the range where we want to find the minimum value C5, C17, G5 filters by product, currently olives. B5, B17, G6 filters by country, currently Spain, Excel will search through the list and return the smallest quantity that matches both criteria. So if we change the product or country, Excel will automatically recalculate the result based on the new criteria. No need to touch the formula again. You got it. Was that helpful? In the next video, we'll dive into even more powerful Excel tricks. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. See you soon.